Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is a series I've always wanted to cover on the channel, Harry Potter. We're going to look at the history of vampires and werewolves in the wizarding world, how they get turned, their abilities, and more. One of my favorite actors, Bill Nye, no, not the science guy, plays the Minister for Magic Rufus Scrimger, and you might know him because he plays Victor, a vampire elder in the Underworld movies, and Davy Jones. The actor Robert Pattinson plays Cedric Diggory, but also plays a famous vampire from Twilight, Edward Cullen. This is kind of unrelated, but I thought it was kind of cool. The actor that plays young Gellert Grindelwald in the original movies is the same actor who portrays one in the fourth season of Stranger Things. Let's start with the vampires of the wizarding world, since I feel like we know less about them. Not much is said about vampires in the books or films. We know that vampires are in fact real because Harry studies them in defense against the dark arts. And Harry does actually meet one vampire in the book, Half-Blood Prince, Sanguini. Scenes were filmed for the movie including the vampire at the Slug Club Christmas party, but it ended up being cut. You can still see him actually though in this one scene, standing right behind Luna. Vampires are considered a dark magical humanoid being. They are humans affected with the vampire curse. I wonder if the curse came from some kind of spell created by a dark wizard, or if it was some kind of affliction passed from a magical creature. When someone feeds on the blood of a unicorn, they are cursed with a half-life. Maybe to become a vampire, there's another creature you can feed off or kill that also leaves you cursed. Vampires are part of the undead family with zombies and inferi. There is something called the Society for Tolerance of Vampires, which must have tried to get more rights for vampires and stop people from hunting them. The Wizarding World did set guidelines to prevent their extinction, and this is because they were once human, so they fall into the part-human category, which is treated a little more fairly. Vampires seem to receive much less discrimination than werewolves for some reason, possibly because they're less likely to attack random people, or they've just had less incidents. Vampires feed on blood, but it's been stated that they can consume regular food like pastries. The sweet shop Honeydukes sells blood-flavored lollipops, presumably for vampires. In the novel Half-Blood Prince, the vampire's Sanguini is seen being very interested in a group of girls. It's implied that young women are his favorite to feed on. This could be the case for all vampires, or just him. Apparently some vampires can use a blood-replenishing potion to sustain their hunger. Vampires in Harry Potter are not immortal like in most series. Carmela Sanguina lives to 196, and Amarillo Lestat until 201. But many witches and wizards have also been known to live this long, and longer, so it's not that impressive for the wizarding world. Dumbledore lived until 115, but he was murdered, so he probably could have lived a lot longer. Nicholas Flamel obviously lived for a very long time, but he kind of cheated. It's unknown if vampires can reproduce, but since vampires are dead, or undead, they probably cannot procreate in the usual way. It's not exactly clear how someone becomes a vampire, but presumably most vampires were once witches and wizards. It's unknown if a muggle could become a vampire. Usually only wizards become werewolves because they're more likely to survive a werewolf attack. This could also be the case with the vampire curse. Werewolves keep their magical powers as seen with Ramus Lupin and Fenrir Greyback, but it's unknown if a vampire also keeps their magical abilities. Since a vampire appeared at the Slug Club party, I would assume he does still have some magical ability. Or vampires might have unique magical abilities of their own and don't require a wand similar to a house elf. It's also possible that when someone becomes a vampire, they lose their ability to perform magic. We have no idea what kind of abilities a vampire from the wizarding world would possess. Possibly super strength and speed, enhanced senses, transforming into a bat, who knows. Since the world is so rife with magic, there's a lot of possibilities. Since vampires are usually undead, I wonder what would happen if they went through the veil, or just looked at the veil. We don't know if vampires are weak to anything like silver or holy objects, but presumably since the vampirism curse comes from magic, things like holy water would have no effect. Vampires apparently don't like the smell of garlic though. Professor Quirrell said he had a run-in with vampires and now he hangs it around to keep them away. Although garlic keeping vampires away could just be a myth. However, he is the defense against the dark arts teacher, so garlic could actually work. 
1913, during a defense against the dark arts lesson, taught by then Professor Dumbledore, an unnamed student had their bogar assume the form of a vampire. When the student cast the ridiculous spell, it made the vampire bogar take the form of a bucktooth bunny rabbit. When Professor Lupin jumped in front of the bogar, it showed the full moon. I wonder what a vampire would see if it stood in front of the bogar. The sun, maybe? Gilderoy Lockhart wrote a book with the title Voyages with Vampires about his alleged meeting of vampires. The book had information on a vampire that after an encounter with Lockhart could eat nothing but lettuce. As Lockhart was a fraud and took credit for other wizards' accomplishments, the story about the lettuce-eating vampire probably did happen, but not to Lockhart. JK wrote in her early notes that she had a vampire named Trokar as part of the Hogwarts staff. Imagine if there was a vampire teacher though. Would have been pretty cool. There's also a ghost teacher in the book, which I always thought would have been really great for the films. JK wrote though that she decided that she didn't want vampires to play a big role in her stories because there was already a lot going on. Now let's take a look at Lycanthropy, the werewolves of Harry Potter. Werewolves are usually looked down on in the wizarding world. Since werewolves are usually hunted by witches and wizards, they are at much higher risk of becoming cursed. In the late 19th century, the English authority on werewolves, Professor Marlowe Forfang, did a full study on their habits. Nearly everyone that he studied was a witch or wizard before being a werewolf. So although it's possible, and does happen sometimes, it's unlikely for a muggle to become a werewolf. Wizards live longer and are much more likely to survive an attack compared to a muggle. The professor also learned that muggles taste different to werewolves. This could also be another reason that it's more likely to spread among witches and wizards. The ministry classification for werewolves is 5X, the most dangerous class. The Ministry of Magic has never been good at dealing with werewolf relations. In 1637, they developed the Werewolf Code of Conduct. Werewolves were supposed to sign it, promising they would not harm anyone and would lock themselves up on full moons. Big surprise, nobody wanted to admit to being a werewolf, so nobody signed. Later, the werewolf registry suffered from the same problem, so it's an unreliable source for finding lichens. They have been bounced between the beast and being division for years because the ministry could not decide if they were human or beast. Eventually, the registry was closed down. It was often a joke around the ministry that being sent to the werewolf registry meant that you were soon to be fired. Dolores Umbridge was responsible for a werewolf legislation that made it almost impossible for a werewolf to get a job so most of them live in poverty. How does someone become a werewolf? Well, you must be bitten by a werewolf while it's in its wolf form during the full moon. Once the saliva of a lichen reacts with the blood of the victim, they will become a werewolf. Turning into a werewolf is a painful ordeal. Your bones and body growing to almost twice the size. Ramus howls and yells in pain when he transforms. Unless treated, the person will also suffer sickness for a few days before and after the transformation. We see Ramus looking a little off and staring into the grass sort of like an animal and Tonk says it's because the full moon is coming. When a werewolf takes its wolf form, it completely loses its sense of right and wrong. They would kill their best friend if they got in their way. That is, unless your friends are Animagus. When Sirius and his friends would take their animal form, they could roam the grounds with Lupin in his wolf form with no worries. So werewolves are only dangerous to humans. You may recall Professor Lupin and Sirius fighting, but that was only because Sirius was trying to protect Harry and his friends. At one point, Professor Lupin even tries to ignore Sirius to try to attack the kids, and he has to jump back in the way. If there are no humans around, werewolves will sometimes attack themselves out of frustration, which is why Ramus has so many scars. They also usually look prematurely aged, it's unclear if it's the physical or mental stress that causes this, or a mixture of both. In the film, the werewolf has a bit more of a human-wolf hybrid appearance, but in the books, werewolves are described as looking indistinguishable from a real wolf. Although the snout may be slightly shorter, pupils smaller, and a tuft tail instead of a full and bushy one. The easiest way to tell if it's a werewolf or just a wolf is the behavior. Genuine wolves are not that aggressive, and they will only attack humans in very harsh circumstances. But werewolves hunt humans exclusively and are little to no danger to other animals. 
which I mentioned before. People used to think that wolves were very dangerous, but this was most likely werewolves being misidentified. There is no cure for lycanthropy, but the condition can be treated to make it easier for the person. Many potions have been developed over the years to help werewolves, but the most popular is wolfsbane. This potion, when taken, will allow the werewolf to retain their human mind while transformed, this eliminating the risk of attacking humans and doing something they might regret. These potions are very hard to make or very expensive to buy, and because most werewolves live in poverty, they go without. Dementors cannot detect animals. That's how Sirius escaped Escaban. But I wonder if Dementors would be able to see werewolves. If they don't affect Animagus, I think a werewolf would also be safe. What about a vampire though? Since they're possibly dead, and might not have a heartbeat, Dementors might ignore them like they're not there. However, vampires might still have a soul, so Dementors could still give them the kiss. According to Gilderoy Lockhart, the Homorphous Charm could force a werewolf back into human form. However, because Lockhart's reputation is, again, a liar, his information should be taken with a grain of salt. But it's well known that many of Lockhart's claims were based on true stories that other wizards told him. We learn in Chamber of Secrets that Lockhart would steal other wizards' accomplishments and stories and then erase their memory with a memory charm. So even though Lockhart didn't do many of the things that he wrote about, there is a chance that the charm did in fact exist, and actually work. Some people think that when someone becomes a werewolf, they are even vicious in their human form. However, this is not always true. Professor Lupin is very kind and normal when he's in human form, which is the case for most. However, you do have werewolves like Fenrir Greyback, who try to bite and savagely attack people even while in human form. He also keeps his fingernails sharpened as a form of attack. Like I stated before, if you are attacked by a werewolf in human form, you will not become a werewolf. You have to be attacked by them in wolf form. However, if they are attacked in human form, those people will sometimes take on wolf-like characteristics, such as liking raw meat, but nothing too serious. If a werewolf attacks you, the wounds do not heal like normal, even if the werewolf is in human form. Bill is attacked by Fenrir Greyback and he remains scarred for his life. Fenrir leads a group of werewolves that fought for Voldemort in the Second Wizarding War. They believed that under Voldemort they would be treated better, but this didn't seem to be true. Death Eaters looked down on them and they were not even allowed to wear the Dark Mark. They were basically just used as a way to threaten people. Muggles have created a lot of myths and legends about werewolves, but they are actually not weak to silver. Silver does have its place in werewolf lore though. We learn that when someone is bitten or attacked, the wounds don't heal properly. And if it's a large bite wound, the person can die pretty quickly. A mixture of powdered silver and dittany can be used on a fresh bite wound to seal it off and prevent the person from bleeding out. Although it's not uncommon for people to beg to die rather than become a werewolf. Usually werewolves reproduce by attacking someone and turning them, but werewolves can reproduce with other werewolves or humans. Most werewolves refrain from trying to have children due to the fear of passing on their condition. When Professor Lupin had a child with a wizard, the child was born normal. There's actually no evidence that lycanthropy can be passed down through birth, so why lycans fear having children is a bit strange. Although we don't know what would happen if the mother was a werewolf instead of the father. It's also unknown if their child just got lucky. There might have been a possibility of him being born a werewolf. If two werewolves mate, it's presumably the same as when a werewolf and a human mate. But there is something special that can occur with two werewolves. If they mate on a full moon, instead of regular children, they will look exactly like wolves, but have human level intelligence and they are not aggressive toward humans. This is extremely rare and has only happened twice as far as anyone knows. One of these litters of unique werewolf pups was allowed to live on Hogwarts grounds under extreme secrecy by Dumbledore. Rumors spread of werewolves in the forest and the teachers never tried to dismiss the rumors because they knew there was no danger and it kept the kids out of the forest. It said some of these wolves still live there.
Harry Potter is one of my all-time favorite series, and I've always wanted to make a video about it, so I hope you guys enjoyed. And even if you've seen Harry Potter a lot, like I have, hopefully you learned something new. Remus Lupin is such a special character, and I really like what they did with werewolves and vampires in Harry Potter. Although I do wish we got a little more vampires. Not a biased opinion. Prisoner of Azkaban is one of the best Harry Potter movies in my opinion, and the Bogart scene will always hold a special place in my memory. If I missed anything, please let me know. And if there's any other movies or TV series you think I should cover, leave it in the comments, as I always read them. I have a list in my phone of a bunch of suggestions you guys have left. A couple that I've been thinking about recently is the Vampires from American Horror Story, and also What We Do in the Shadows. Thanks so much for supporting the channel, and if you enjoyed, leave a like. And maybe hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.